Call to order the regular monthly meeting of the Ellsworth City Council, Monday, September 19, 2016, 7 p.m. All councillors are present and accounted for. We would ask now that you stand with us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item three, rules of order. The council meetings are conducted under Robert's rules of order, plus uh, other uh, rules that were adopted at the organizational meeting in November of 2015. Also at this time, I would request that uh, you turn off or silence uh, cell phones and any other electronic devices, and we thank you for that. Item number four, adoption of minutes from the uh, following meetings of Elser City Council. First, the August 5th, 2016 special meeting, and also the uh, August 15th, 2016 regular monthly meeting. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Moved and seconded. <laughs> Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Thank you. City Manager's report. Manager Cole. Yes. Um, given the fact we have a lot of guests tonight, I'll be brief. Um, up on the screen, you're seeing the uh, five award winners in the city's recent uh, photo contest uh, that was conducted on our website. Uh, the voting was done by uh, viewers of our website. Uh, the uh, first place went to Matt Flanagan, Sunset on Branch Lake. Second place, Jessica Smith, Fall on Leonard Lake. Third place, Simon French Productions, Ariel of High Street. Fourth place, Simon French Productions, Sunset on Union River, all these sunsets, I'm looking for a sunrise too, but anyhow. Uh, and finally, our own Jana Newman was fifth place, Union R L River Lobster Pot Dock. So we thank everyone who, uh, who uh, competed. Uh, we, we had well over 50 photos, uh, some really nice ones. And we're going to be using these on our new website, which is set to roll out uh, in October. And as you'll recall, the website will now have capabilities so that people want to ha sign up for automatic notifications of meetings, uh, you know, agendas, minutes, those kinds of things. You can sign up and, uh, and get advanced notice on such things. So uh, that's that. Uh, Autumn Gold is this weekend, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There's a variety of activities. Uh, I'd refer you and the public to the uh, Chamber website for more details. And lastly, Knowlton Park will close down for the season on October 11th, which means that the uh, comfort station will, will shut down at that time. The splash pad will stay open until that time. However, it's set to go off automatically if the temperature gets below 65 degrees. <laughs> so, But if it's 75 degrees out, which it's supposed to be over the next few days, uh, still take advantage. Uh, of the splash pad. So that's all I have this Great. evening. Any questions of the manager? Any comments? I just want to say that those uh, make a great backdrop for council meetings. It takes off the boredom. It's very calming. <laughs> <laughs> we may not be able to pay attention quite as well, but they're beautiful photos. Thank you, Manager Cole. Uh, item six, committee reports. Uh, any councillors who have uh, attended a committee meeting since the last time we met and have a report. We'll hear it now. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Moore. Uh, I'd like to have uh, the Harbor Master come forward and give us a, a brief rundown of what's been going on. All right. Uh, Mr. Harbor Master. <laughs> <laughs> Should have told him that today. He figured out something. I can't. Season's been wrapping up. Uh, we've been busy getting everything cleaned up. The restrooms had new paint this year. The uh, Elsa Flower Garden completed their garden. It looks beautiful. Um, people are already starting to pull boats. Autumn Gold weekend, this coming weekend, there's going to be hot air balloon rides on Friday night <coughs> and Saturday morning. The, to follow the boat rides from 1 to 4, the Chowder Fest noon to two not sure on that one yeah. 
and uh, the beer and wine tasting tent. And now I don't again. I don't know the hours on that. One to four. One to four. One to four. Uh, where exactly is that? That's going to be behind the gazebo. Saturday. Thank you very yeah. much. Just so I have a question, if you don't mind, uh, it, anybody can answer it. But have we sent a formal a thank you to the Garden Club for uh, that the, the flower garden that they've done down there? I mean, if we have not, uh, Mr. Chair, we will do so. Yeah. I think and that also would be your, I, you all's regards. I also I did attend the Harbor Commission meeting. I'm glad his memory came because I left my notes home. But one other thing, too, is there was a vendor with a proposal for next year there, a food vendor, which had a very interesting offer. Good. Hopefully we can see that earlier this year. That's what, we, uh, year. Was, what was discussed. It should be. Excellent. Any other committees to report? Seeing none, we'll go to number seven. Item number seven is citizen comments. This is an opportunity for residents of Ellsworth to make comments uh, regarding any business that will be co covered in today's uh, agenda or other items that may be of interest to the council. Uh, we ask that you uh, come to the podium, state your name for the record, keep your uh, comments brief, and uh, germane to city business. Any comments at all from the citizens? Good to see. I guess we get them all by Facebook now. You might. <laughs> Item 8, presentation of awards. We have presentation of commendations <coughs> for various things tonight. And I'm going to ask uh, Chief Bitmore if he'd come to the podium and uh, start with the first category. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, before I start my first uh, letter of accommodation for uh, Sergeant Glenn Mosier, Officer Sean Merchant, Officer Andrew Weatherby, and Deputy Dana Austin, I want to recognize uh, Chief Deputy Pat Kane, who's here tonight from the Sheriff's Department, and also Tim Cody, Lieutenant Tim Cody from the Sheriff's Department, who have come to uh, honor all the officers. <coughs> um, Good to have you here. <laughs> on August 8th uh, this year at around 9.40 p.m., Ellsworth Police responded to a 911 call that it was received from Bucksport Road for a 51-year-old male who was unresponsive, unresponsive and suffering from an overdose from an unknown drug. Sergeant Mosier arrived on scene with Officer Merchant, Officer Weatherby, and Deputy Austin. After knocking on the apartment door, a male voice from inside yelled for them to come in. As they entered the apartment, a male motioned them down the hall into the living room area where they found an unconscious male lying face up in the middle of the room. Officer Weatherby and Officer Merchant began to speak with the unconscious male unconscious male while Deputy Austin and Mosier tended to the unresponsive male. <coughs> oh, they, let me try that again. Officer Weatherby and Officer Merchant began to speak with a conscious male while Deputy Austin and Sergeant Mosier tended to the unresponsive male on the floor. As Sergeant Mosier prepared to deploy a dose of naloxone to the unresponsive male, that's the Narcan, Deputy Austin checked for a pulse he indicated that he could not feel a pulse and the male was not breathing. Sergeant Mosier checked the male's eyes, which were partially open, finding his pupils were fixed in pinpoint. At this point, Deputy Austin initiated CPR and completed chest, chest compressions while Sergeant Mosier administered the first of two doses of Narcan. The results of their actions resulted in saving the man's life. We just received training in this procedure and were carrying the Narc uh, Narcan the week before. The actions of these op officers and Deputy Austin are credit to the Ellsworth Police Department and the Hancock County Sheriff's Department, and therefore they are all commended for their life-saving actions. <laughs>
While they're coming, let me read the commendation. In recognition of your quick action and exemplary dedication in the administration of life-saving medical intervention, which played a critical role in the saving of a life, your actions and integrity are credit to the Elder Police Department and indicative of a strong commitment to the department's core values of community service and professionalism. And uh, we are proud to present these to you tonight. And uh, thank you for the good work. I also want to recognize uh, Dr. Dan Ranke. He couldn't be here tonight from the uh, Maine Coast Memorial Hospital. He helped me uh, prepare the uh, policy for the Narcan that was uh, put in the cruisers a few weeks ago, and he also provided us the training. Like I said, he's working in the emergency room tonight. He can't be here, but we will deliver the uh, certificate to him. So. <clears throat> okay. On August 18th this year, Ellsworth Fire Department and Police Department together were dispatched to a 911 emergency call for a boat overturned on Green Lake. The initial call stated that two people, a man and a woman, had been thrown from a boat and that they, they were in the water. The first people to notice there was a serious problem was Anthony Zarian and Jeremy Ray, who were working construction nearby on a roof. They took immediate action and told Hunter Fernald to go and get his mother, who in turn notified Ricky Miles. Thereafter, Ricky Miles jumped on his jet ski and went out to the lake to render assistance. Ricky was subsequently able to get both victims to shore. Ricky told Lieutenant Page that the woman was in pretty rough shape when he got to them. Based on the actions of all the individuals involved in this matter, a tragedy may have been averted. Therefore, it is an honor to recognize all the individuals for their quick thinking and working together as a team to get the victims involved in this incident safely to shore. <clears throat> okay, we'd like to call you. Uh if your name was just mentioned, we'd like to call you up to the front. Anthony, Jeremy, Jennifer. <laughs> statement will be a little bit more brief. I don't have a prepared statement, and I will stand corrected if I get my date wrong, but on September 1st, uh, and I, I say this, that I might get that wrong, because I, for full disclosure, I wasn't at this incident scene, but the feedback that I got. On September 1st, there was a gentleman that had a medical event uh, driving down High Street uh, and was witnessed by Jeff Carling, um, and as they were driving along and he followed this vehicle uh, down Washington Street and lo and behold he witnessed him going up on the curb and, and kind of not really necessarily correcting uh, his driving habit 
So Jeff recognized that something wasn't quite right and continued on following him. Uh, in the events leading up to the actual crash in the harbor, uh, he was doing what believed to be exceeding 80 miles an hour as he crossed Wash uh, Water Street, narrowly missing a vehicle on Water Street, careening down through the harbor pack, uh, threading the needle between a large rock and the sign down there and then up in the river. Uh, consequently, he ended up submerging the vehicle uh, following this uh, crashing through everything. Uh, Mr. Carlin uh, continued following, uh, got down to the river, uh, the harbor. Uh, at the same time, Harbor Master Har uh, Adam Wilson noticed the event occurring as well. And these two gentlemen <coughs> came to the rescue of the victim in the truck. Uh, and from all understanding, if they didn't have this quick action, uh, and forethought to, to go in and rescue this gentleman, the, the outcome probably would have been tragically worse, uh, if not fatal. So it behooves me and, and makes me proud to know that we have citizens and other employees in the city that would step up uh, in the time of need and take the action necessary to save someone's lives. So of your quick action in responding to a potentially life-threatening situation involving the rescue of a motorist whose vehicle crashed into the Union River on September 1, 2016. Your actions had a positive influence on the outcome of the situation and aided first responders in avoiding a potential tragedy. The Ellsworth community is made better through the actions of courageous and caring citizens like you. Adam Wilson, thank you. And congratulations. <laughs> On behalf of the council, I'd like to thank all of the first responders that are here tonight, Ellsworth Police Department, Ellsworth Fire Department, and members of the Hancock County Sheriff's Office. We thank you for your presence and your continued support. We have your back. <laughs> Item 9, Unfinished Business. Public hearing and action uh, on amendments to the City of Ellsworth Code of Ordinances, Chapter 5. Sewer Ordinance Article 10, Section 1008, Abatements. This item has been tabled from July 18, 2016, regular meeting. Public hearing has not been held. Mr. Chairman, move to table. Second. Move and second. All in favor? That is unanimous. Item 9 is tabled. Next, we have uh, three items, four items, excuse me, on the consent agenda. And we, unless there is uh, a reason to uh, set one aside, if any councillor would like to do so, we can. Otherwise, we'll deal with them all as one motion. Number 10, Council Order Number 091604, that's request of the City Clerk for appointment of wardens and ward clerks for the four voting districts within Ellsworth for the November 8, 2016 State of Maine General and Referendum Election and Municipal Election. Item 11, Council Order Number 091605, request of the City Clerk for approval on the time polling places open for the November 8, 2016 State of Maine General and Referendum Election, Municipal Election as 7 a.m. Item 12, Council Order Number 091606, request to promote James Barkhouse from first alternate member to regular member of the Planning Board with a term to expire June 30, 2018. And item 13, Council Order Number 091607, request to the Deputy Treasurer Tax Collector to accept payments on tax acquired timeshare units per the attached spreadsheet and authorize City Manager to release said properties through Municipal Quick Claim Deed. Councilor Phillips. Mr. Chairman, move approval as presented. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you, that's unanimous. 
And we shall move to new business, item number 14, public hearing and action on the applications for the following licenses. First is Daniel Potts doing business as Lakeside Cedar Cabins, 397 Mariahville uh, Road for renewal of a city lodging license. City staff, any concerns or any problems? Right, we'll open the public hearing. Any citizens care to comment on this? Anyone have questions or concerns? Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Council, what is your wish? Mr. Chairman, move approval the request of Daniel Potts. DBA Lakeside City Cabins. Second. second. Move and second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. <clears throat> Next application is Roland Ebel, or Ebel, I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, doing business as Sunset Motor Court, 210 Twin Hill Road, for renewal of a city lodging license. Any issues, uh, city staff? Nothing? <clears throat> in the public hearing? Anyone care to comment or have concerns about this application? Hearing none, I'll close the public hearing for council action. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the request of uh, Roland Ivel, uh, Sunset Motor Court, uh, for renewal of a city lodging license. Second. Move and second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Next application, Joseph A. Lusardi doing business as Maine Organic Therapy for relocation of an existing medical marijuana dispensary license, including a city victualler, lic victualler license from 9 Carriage Road to 3 Myrick Street, Suite B. Any issues, staff? Open the public hearing. Anyone care to speak to this application? Have concerns? Hearing none, public hearing is closed. Council action. Mr. Chairman, move approval of Joseph A. Luzhati, DBA Maine Organic Therapy. Second. Move and second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. Next is AARGH Inc. doing business as Pat's Pizza, 396 High Street for renewal of a city class C license, victualler and alcohol and renewal of a state malt, spirituous and vinous class one, two, three, and four restaurant liquor license. Any issues? City staff. I'll open the public hearing. Anyone care to comment on this application? Hearing none. Public hearing is closed. Mr. Chairman, Chairman. Move approval. <laughs> All over the place. Second. <laughs> I would say that I was disappointed you did not phonetically. Arg? Yeah. Oh. Ah. <laughs> it is pirate. So moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? That is unanimous. Hannah Yee Incorporated doing business as China Hill Restaurant, 301 High Street for renewal of a city class B license, Victor Alcohol and Amusement, and renewal of a state restaurant license. Uh, class one, two, three, and four, malt, spirituous, vinous, liquor license. Any issues, staff? Open the public hearing. Anyone care to comment? Hearing none, public hearing is closed. Council. Mr. Chairman, move approval. Second. Move and second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Next is Over Easy LLC doing business at Sylvia's Cafe, 248 State Street, Suite 8 at the Mill Mall for renewal of a city Class C license, Victualler and Alcohol, and renewal of a state restaurant Class 3 and 4 Malt and Vinous Liquor license. Any issues, city staff? Open the public hearing. Any comments? Hearing none. Public hearing is closed. Council action. Mr. Chairman, move approval. Second. Move and second it. Any discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. That concludes item 14. Item 15, public hearing and action on an amendment to the City of Ellsworth Code of Ordinances, Chapter 36, General Assistance Ordinance. City Clerk will speak to that. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, this is the yearly request um, from the general administrator, general assistance administrator. Um, the state maximums have been released for the general assistance program for the October 1st, um, 2016 through October 1st, 2017 year. There's just a slight increase in the household maximums, which would allow each member of a family to be eligible for $2 more per month. Um, so uh, Tina would just like to make that amendment to the ordinance. Thank you. I'll open the public hearing. Anybody care to speak to this uh, item, number 15, the amendment to the Code of Ordinances, General Assistance? Hearing nothing, I will close the public hearing and counsel. I resolve to approve the amendments to the Elsa Code of Ordinances, Chapter 36, General Assistance Ordinance, as presented. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Motion carried. Unanimous. Item 16, Council Order Number 091608, request to the City Clerk for approval to relocate Ward 2 voting place from Your Place Community Center located at 4 Old Mill Road to the Community of Christ Church located at 283 State Street beginning with the November 8, 2016 State of Maine General and Referendum Election and Municipal Election. Do you want to speak to this to uh, Madam Clerk? I'm sure. So my staff and I a few years ago started to kind of brainstorm where we could move Ward 2 um, within the city. It's kind of a, a hidden spot. It's difficult for people to find and it's difficult to cross back into the flow of traffic from. So we've been looking. Um, the state gave us a little leniency to move it outside of the ward because that ward is kind of in a unique spot of the city and there's not a lot of options available for larger buildings. Um, we found the um, Christ, uh, Community Church of Christ or Community Church of Christ, I guess, is um, at 283 State Street. It's right next to the high school and EBS. It has a large parking lot and easy access into the polling place. So um, we put in an application. The state has um, approved it contingent on final approval by the city council. Any questions regarding that move? Well, I think it's a great move for the constituents up in that area. Safer to get in, safer to get out. And visibility. More, right? more, yeah. more comfortable for our staff that have to work there. Yeah. Got a full kitchen so they can have the coffee and stuff. Yeah. And it's a nice facility. Yeah, no question. Mr. Chairman. Uh, arrangements will be made with the construction construction crew crews uh, for election day access to that church. Yes, they will. <laughs> Perfect. We'll be on our weekly uh, meeting agenda with the DOT <laughs> for the next four or five weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Ready? And have War Two uh, voters been? Will they be notified? I, I was waiting for the final approval. not easy to move a voting place in the state of Maine. Ready? Councilman? Yeah. Move uh, to approve the request of the city clerk to relocate Ward 2 voting place um, to, well, from the community center at 4 Old Mill Road to the community of Christ Church located at 283 State Street for all future elections beginning with the November 8th 2016 State of Maine general referendum election and, mun and municipal elections. Second. Move and second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? That's unanimous. 
Thank you. Motion. Uh, item number 17, Council Order number 091609, request the City Manager to award the bid for a new railroad crossing in conjunction with the Forest Avenue Extension Construction Project. Manager Cole. Yeah. As you all know, this is the last step in the trilogy of projects we've been undertaking. The first was the uh, state's Route 1A State Street project where the city is participating and funding the intersection that uh, in signalization that will support the new entrance to the high school as well as uh, city participation in sidewalks and utilities. The second project which was awarded to uh, RF Jordan uh, is involves the con actual construction of the new entrance road uh, that is being paid for with city funds exclusively and now this is the last step uh, which is to uh, construct a railroad crossing that will accommodate the new entrance road this is federal funding where 90 percent of the funds come through the main de department of transportation and 10 percent through the city um, under DOT's locally administered projects programs or the LAP pro program um, we have a big thick book of requirements that have to be met and the deputy city manager is, uh, is the certified LAP administrator and has been very much on top of this. Um, having put out the bid according to DOT specs uh, we received two bids uh, that were opened on September 15th. Um, the low bid from CDL Electric Company was $237,131. Uh, the next bid was from RF Jordan and Sons Construction for $553,200. Uh, action tonight is recommended, would be subject to DOT's final approval, and that is incorporated into the motion. Uh, Head of Fine Associates, who's the city's engineer, uh, on the overall uh, entrance road project has reviewed the documents and found them to be in order and responsive to the bid. Furthermore, uh, VHB, who designed the railroad crossing, is familiar with CDL Electric. Uh, if you go to CDL Electric's website, they do railroad crossings uh, all over the country. This is what they do. Uh, VHB is a national firm and they are familiar with CDL, although they haven't worked directly with them as of late. They do know them to be a reputable firm. This is, uh, as per federal funding requirements, uh, does include a bid, uh, a bond, uh, in terms of the performance of the work. And uh, uh, lastly, but probably most importantly, their bid is spot on with VHB's estimate. <coughs> terms of what the co project would cost and I would say from my own experience at DOT uh, you know something in the 200 250 thousand dollar range for signalization is you know customary in that line so uh, I would recommend that the council uh, authorize city manager to accept the bid from CDL electric company uh, again subject to DOT's final approval Seems like that's the number we were working with over a year ago, estimating what this was going to cost and what our share would be. So it's absolutely pretty and precise you, right there. You can see in the write up, DOT share is just over $213,000, and our share is $23,713. So uh, we're partnering with DOT on this, and uh, uh, we're very grateful to DOT for mm -hmm. providing 90% of the funding. Excellent. Thank you, Manager Cole. Councilor Fortier. Mr. Chairman, a little bit off topic, but okay. it's that same project, and I meant to mention this to you a month or so ago. Um, have we started down the road of getting um, changes to the Ellsworth Elementary Middle School traffic movement permit, which prohibits buses from turning left at Dunkin' Donuts, so that if we get that paperwork done with this new intersection coming on, that our school buses can deliver to the high school in the proper flowage. It was, it was specified in that 
um, traffic movement permit that they were prohibited from turning left at the Dunkin Donuts intersection. So if, if your, you and your staff can yep. check that out and sure. uh, if we could get that amendment started In so place. as soon as the intersection is ready, yep. those buses can yes. go the regular route instead of going out Shore Road, up State Street, the mm. fork in the road and coming up through. Mm. Yeah. I, I just yeah, flashed into my head. No, that's very good. I, I mean, this should negate that, but yeah. like all things in permit, what is obvious yep. is no is what is stated. So we will we will take care of that. Thank you. Thanks. Come some more. Um, you ready? I am ready for our motion. Um, move to approve the request of the city manager as presented, because I can't remember all the things he said. <laughs> we just need to have the numbers, the uh, financial well, figures we, oh, in there, well, and we where go. they come from. Uh, Showed up magically. Gary and I uh, arranged this. <laughs> Move to approve the request of the city manager to accept the bid from CDL Electric Company Inc. for the new railroad crossing in conjunction with the Forest Avenue Extension construction project, subject to Maine Department of Transportation final approval. These services will be funded by the locally administered project funds 90% or $213,417. Dollars and ninety cents, and the local roads capital improvement account ten percent, or twenty three thousand seven hundred thirteen dollars and ten cents. Second, moved and seconded. Thank you, councilors. Any further discussion on this? Seeing none, I'll put the motion. All those in favor? That is unanimous. And if I might, Mr. Chair, yes, I would like to recognize everybody uh, at the staff level who's worked on these projects. This has gone relatively smoothly, but uh, that masks a lot of work underneath the surface mm -hmm. on a lot of people's part. Right. And uh, from public works to the deputy city manager and, and police and others. So uh, right. heartfelt thank you. Right. We're not there quite there yet, but this is the last piece of the puzzle right. to this come online and it's welcome. This is moving it forward. Yeah. Thank you for those comments. Item number 18, council order no, numbers. No commendations, no. <laughs> Item number uh, 18, council order number 091610. Request the city manager to approve local project agreement between Maine DOT and City of Ellsworth regarding Maine DOT's Route 1 and 3 mill and fill project. Yeah. Again, manager. Sure. Uh, I, I believe uh, I've shared with you that the Maine DOT plans to resurface the Union River Bridge down here at Water Street. And uh, that would include the structure itself plus the approaches. Uh, on the east side, uh, there would be a section of approximately 70 feet from where the approaches end up to the Water Street, Main Street intersection uh, that would not be done because that's a local responsibility. But it's just as rutted as the bridge and frankly, if it's not done, it's going to stand out like a sore thumb. Mm. DOT has offered to us, the city, um, the ability to participate at our cost. Obviously, we get to take advantage of the mobilization costs, everything else that's happening. Uh, I doubt that uh, we would mobilize to do this stretch, but for this opportunity, yeah. just because of the cost in doing so, and this would probably wait till the point where the rest of Main Street's done which could be sometime in the future. Uh, $10,000 I think is a very good deal um, uh, and uh, we would take advantage of their unit price. Um, I, I should also note that this does not include two traffic loops that would have to be replaced when this is all milled up. Uh, we're in the process of getting quotes on what that would cost. We've already gotten one close to quote of 4,000, we're getting a second quote, it might come in cheaper, but that would be done separate from this contract, that would be direct from the city. Good. When would that work be done? Uh, they're going out to bid very soon, and it would be done uh, this fall. Good. Excellent. Thanks for being here. Alrighty. Councilor Fortier. Uh, Manager Cole, uh, <clears throat> we've talked in the past replacing that 
um, traffic controller down there. Yep. The one we're looking at, which is a entry level generic, does it have the capability of a camera? We're investigating that. Okay. Uh, I would note that it's a six thousand dollar fix uh, to the signal to be able to at least uh, vary the lighting times and such. To do the full uh, new signal would be more in the range of thirty thousand okay. dollars. So, so long as you, long as someone's looking. Yeah. It's only but we but uh, Jason is looking at that. Okay. But I suspect it will end up being loops again. But it would be nice. A new a new camera would be in the twenty five thousand dollar range. Yeah. Not this year. As much as we would all like to know what the traffic is down there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Councilor Hordier. Moved to authorize the city manager to enter into an agreement with the main department of transportation to undertake the milling and repaving of approximately 389 square yards of pavement surface on Route 1 and 3 adjacent to the Union River Bridge at an estimated cost of $10,000 to the city of Ellsworth to pay for from the local roads program fund. Second. Move and second it. Any discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Motion carried. Unanimous. Thank you. Item number 19. We'll be going into executive session to discuss personnel matters in accordance with MRSA Title I, Chapter 13, Section 405, Paragraph 6A. And just to notify those that might otherwise have waited around, when we come out, we'll be taking no action. So um, we will request a couple of the staff members to stay behind, and we'll identify them. So a motion to go into executive session. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. Move and second to go into executive session. All in favor? Unanimous vote. We are going into executive session. <coughs> 